Brussels. Amber Gibson deserved to live a life of hope and opportunities, her foster parents said today. Instead, she was sexually assaulted and murdered by her own brother. The 16-year-old was killed in late 2021. Connor Gibson, who is now 20, will be sentenced in September. A warning that Connor Gillies' report has details which you may find distressing. Amber Gibson never knew her brother's murderous intentions in these final moments of her life. Lured to a secluded spot, a sister killed by her own brother. In November 2021, Connor Gibson enticed his sibling to her death, removed her clothes in this park, sexually abused her, inflicted blunt force trauma and then strangled her. He'd been staying at this homeless unit where he was filmed disposing of his blood-soaked clothes. Moments before his arrest, he posted this chilling Facebook message. We all miss you, especially me. Throughout this trial, the jury heard just how vulnerable Amber Gibson was. She'd spent much of her life in foster care and was living in a children's home at the time of her killing. And the jury was told the one person that she should have trusted was her brother, Connor Gibson, who sat in the dock throughout the whole of the proceedings with no reaction and no remorse. I welcome the verdict today. It's the correct ver verdict. Um, it won't bring Amber back, but hopefully it will bring some comfort to our, our family and our friends. Another man who found Amber's naked remains was also found guilty of touching her body inappropriately instead of calling police. Amber's foster parents said she was the most giving, caring, loving, supportive and admirable person. She had the most amazing outlook on life, considering the suffering she had experienced, they said. Amber deserved to live a life of hope and opportunities. We really miss Amber. Life will never be the same again. Connor Gillis, Sky News, at the High Court in Glasgow. Sky News understands that the arrival of the first asylum seekers onto the Bibby Stockholm barge docked in Dorset has been delayed until next week at the earliest. The Home Office originally said the first arrivals would be this week, with a plan for a structured increase in numbers. Now, treating a patient with type 2 diabetes costs the NHS three times of a non-diabetic patient each year. So with a near 2 million more people projected to be diabetic by 2040, you can see the likely impact on health budgets. A report published today says the NHS will need to shift its focus from care in hospital to care in the community as a result, as our health correspondent Ashish Joshi reports. There is no other treatment for me. Joseph didn't think he'd live to see this day, his silver wedding anniversary. He's battled. to a secluded spot, a sister killed by her own brother. In November 2021, Connor Gibson enticed his sibling to her death, 
removed her clothes in this park, sexually abused her, inflicted blunt force trauma and then strangled her. He'd been staying at this homeless unit where he was filmed... ...disposing of his blood-soaked clothes. Moments before his arrest, he posted this chilling Facebook message. We all miss you, especially me. Throughout this trial, the jury heard just how vulnerable Amber Gibson was. She'd spent much of her life in foster care and was living in a children's home at the time of her killing. And the jury was told the one person that she should have trusted was her brother, Connor Gibson, who sat in the dock throughout the whole of the proceedings with no reaction and no remorse. I welcome the verdict today. It's the correct ver verdict. Um, it won't bring Amber back, but hopefully it will bring some comfort to our, our family and our friends. Another man who found Amber's naked remains was also found guilty of touching her body inappropriately instead of calling police. Amber's foster parents said she was the most giving, caring, loving, supportive and admirable person. She had the most amazing outlook on life, considering the suffering she had experienced, they said. Amber deserved to live a life of hope and opportunities. We really miss Amber. Life will never be the same again. Connor Gillis, Sky News, at the High Court in Glasgow. Sky News understands that the arrival of the first asylum seekers is to increase in numbers. Now, treating a patient with type 2 diabetes costs the NHS three times of a non-diabetic patient each year. So with a near 2 million more people projected to be diabetic by 2040, you can see the likely impact on health budgets. A report published today says the NHS will need to shift its focus from care in hospital to care in the community as a result, as our health correspondent Ashish Joshi reports. There is no other treatment for me. Joseph didn't think he'd live to see this day, his silver wedding anniversary. He's battled chronic lung conditions since birth. Now Joseph also has COPD and has been told it will take his life. I've never been one to give up. I've always liked to fight. This is ultimately the biggest fight. I have just to remain as positive as I can in the hope that something will be developed even if not for me, but for other people who are just starting on the journey. Without intervention, one in five of us could be living with major illness like COPD, cancer and heart failure by 2040. An ageing population and rising levels of obesity are cancelling gains in smoking rates and blood pressure. These patients are vulnerable, they're elderly, so they will need looking after and someone to be you know, caring for them. So if there's not that support, then they start to deteriorate, they don't drink enough, they get sepsis, they get reduced mobility, and then they'll be back in hospital again. Within the next 20 years, an additional 1.7 million people could be living with chronic pain, and an extra 1.9 million more people are projected to be living with diabetes. And that has financial implications. A non-diabetic patient currently costs the NHS around £560 per year, compared with over 3000 for type 1 diabetes and almost £1,700 for type 2. There are also immediate pressures. Healthy life expectancy has been on the decline since 2010 and the number of people living with serious illness is going up compared with the number of working age adults. And if that continues, it will have serious implications for a health system funded through tax like the NHS. Advancements in technology and medicine could mitigate the growing demand caused by an aging population with complex health needs. But for Joseph, they will probably come too late. Ashish Joshi, Sky News. 
Parliament should decide if there should be indicative limits on the amount of outside work that MPs can do, according to the country's most senior ethics watchdog. Lord Evans, the chairman of the Committee on Standards in Public Life, praised work by Sky News on the Westminster Accounts Project, revealing how money moves through the political system, which he said had helped transparency. He was speaking to our deputy political editor, Sam Coates. How much extra work should MPs be allowed to do? 89,000 hours, that's the total amount of time all MPs have worked in second jobs over the course of this parliament. And who is giving the cash that funds their campaigns? Two individuals in there who shut the door when we ask more questions. Sky News has been investigating and showing the public how money moves through our political system. Lord Evans is the most senior ethics watchdog in the country, directly advising the Prime Minister. He says it's time for major reform. Do you think there are some MPs for whom the focus isn't clearly on their constituents? There have been some quite well-documented cases where it's hard to argue that this person is putting their main focus on their parliamentary duties given the amount of time that they appear to be giving to other activities. Is there something you think should be done now to change the system? We've encouraged the House authorities, the parliamentary authorities, to look at whether there are indicative limits to how much time somebody is putting into their external interests. And I think that would be helpful. In January, Sky News attempted to answer a simple question. Who was behind the donations going directly to MPs? It wasn't easy. Uh, is anyone in there? Does anyone work in there? There doesn't seem to be anybody here. I don't think there is enough information about where money is coming from. I don't think it's easy to identify who is giving money. I think there are still risks of foreign money coming into the political process here. We made a number of recommendations uh, on this. The government have not accepted those. We think that's a, a, a mistake. The rules are not strict, they are not rigorous, and they are insufficiently transparent. The Prime Minister entered number 10 with a pledge to raise standards. This government will have integrity at every level. That work, it seems, still unfinished. There have been frustrations because we have made what we believe to be appropriate and balanced uh, independent recommendations which government has not taken up and we think that's a mistake. There are a lot of things that need to be improved. There is certainly a big agenda for change still, you know, that we need to address. Last week, the government announced some changes to the system, tweaks, but not a major overhaul. That looks too painful this close to an election. Will things ever change? Sam Coates, Sky News. Now, one of the armbands that players wear in the World Cup at the moment calls for an end to violence against women. But FIFA were accused today of stopping questions to a coach who has been accused of sexual misconduct, claims that he says are fake. And tonight, there are questions for another official after he said he didn't believe in equal pay. Our sports correspondent, Rob Harris, has this report. A coach at the Women's World Cup challenged on accusations of sexual misconduct before FIFA stepped in. I'll ask you to restrict the questions to the football and to the tournament only for this press conference. I'll go to the next question. But Zambia's World Cup debut has been overshadowed by reports Bruce Moape coerced players into having sex with him and made threats to deter them from speaking out. Moape calls the allegations fake but questions linger about why he's still leading the team. There's no way I can uh, re retire without, uh, but for no reason. Maybe your reason, it's because, uh, because of what you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are reading from the, from the media or from the press. And attempts to ask the captain were shut down by Zambia's media officer. I think, Once uh, again, I would request... I think that we'll, we'll not take those questions. After losing their opening game to Japan, Zambia next plays Spain in Auckland. FIFA won't comment on any investigation into the coach, but football's governing body has partnered with the UN to campaign to end violence against women, a message on some captains' armbands. For rights campaigners, FIFA's activism is not matched by the rigour of their own investigations. FIFA is absolutely refusing to put in place good governance measures to get sexual abusers out of sport, as in Zambia.
Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.